Hello and welcome back to Tea Book Club 5 Minute Readings. Tea Book Club is an online book club for tea readers around the world. We read a book over two months, so we've just recently started our current cycle um, of a new book. At the end of the first month we meet for a social meetup where we do share some thoughts on the book um, and we have a theme that we pick from the book and we just meet to share tea and chat, which is really great to share that with people from around the world. At the end of the second month, we meet online um, for a book discussion where we share our thoughts and views and stories and things that we've picked up from the book. So our April-May book is Tales of the Tea Trade by Michelle and Rob Commons. Um, if you caught last week's episode where I did a five-minute reading, I was we were talking about eating soil, which was really fascinating. Um, it's a great book. I normally do the five minute readings and post them on a Monday. Um, it seems that with this book, Friday feels better. Um, so the readings are going to come out on a Friday now. So there we are. Um, it's great to use the readings just to see what's happening in the book, see where you might want to jump in if you've got the book or to encourage you to actually get the book. If you like what you're hearing, then order the book. You can get it from um, the Commons website. Um, and just hop on to Instagram or the link below and go to Join Tea Book Club and you can get in on Tea Book Club and join us for um, chats, discussions and reading. Each week I do a five minute reading, just a little snippet. So I've not got very far um, since last week's reading, but that's fine because, you know, some, week, some weeks we have a big jump, some weeks a little jump. So I'm jumping in at page 31. Um, so I'm just going to set the timer for five minutes. Here we go. Page 31. Plucking. Plucking is the harvesting of the leaves from tea bushes by hand. For the production of quality tea, there are clear guidelines as to which leaves should be plucked. This is generally called the plucking standard and could stipulate just the leaf bud, the bud and a single leaf or two leaves, and the bud for white, green, yellow, black and poor teas or up to three to five leaves and occasionally a bud for oolongs. Today the best known configuration is two leaves in the bud, mostly due to images of teas like Darjeeling. This sort of specification is known to have existed in China back in the Tang Dynasty, 618 to 907 AD, for top quality green tea. Knowledge of the plucking standard allows an ev evaluation to be made of a tea's quality and therefore its cost. If an oolong is found to be made up of two leaves in a bud or black tea from five leaves, these may well be inferior teas. If they are consistent in their standards, th their value will increase. However, particularly in the case of oolongs, plucking standards are harder to generalise and can vary consider considerably in different areas and according to factors such as weather fluctuations and how quickly the leaves have grown. Historically, there was more emphasis on specifying plucking standards in former colonial areas such as India, Sri Lanka and Kenya, where many of the systems that were introduced by the British still exist today, and black tea is the main type produced. In our experience of travelling around the tea fields, plucking standards for white, green and black teas from all countries are readily given, whereas for oolong growers it varies. One very specific plucking standard is for a tea we will explain, explore later, Taiwanese Oriental Beauty, see page 120. This special tea relies on a small insect to create its unique flavour. The plucking standard specifies the number of leaves to be plucked, as well as the fact that only the bitten leaves should be plucked. The rest are left as they ha would adversely affect, the, adversely affect quality. In most countries, plucking usually starts after the dormant period of winter. However, in Africa, Sri Lanka and southern Indian areas, where it does not get cold enough for this to happen, plucking can occur all year. During the growth period throughout the year, there are peaks associated with when rainfall and sunshine is optimal. Th these seasons have various names depending on the country. The diagram opposite, which you can look at at your leisure when you're reading, the diagram opposite shows a generalised view of these seasons, since of course the harvest time can vary according to the climate. For countries that do have a dormant period, the best tea often comes after this in spring. In China, this is called pre Ching Ming. In India, first flush. In Japan, Xincha. And Ujion in South Korea. The quality results from a build up of nutrients in the plant during the cold period and preparation for new growth. When the 
the heat and longer days return, growth begins, releasing this store of nutrients and meaning that the leaf has a higher concentration of beneficial flavour compounds. Initially, the leaves are small and the bud is fat, but as growth continues, the leaf gets larger and the bud skinnier, eventually opening, opening out to become a leaf. This effectively dilutes the flavour compounds, reducing the quality of the flavour, so early plucking is key. When the next peak in growth of the year occurs, there is not the same store of nutrients which changes the flavour possibility in those teas. This is not necessarily a reduction in quality. The best Assam, for example, is deemed to be from the second flush, or the second peak in growth in the year, when the leaves are thicker and have developed their characteristic malty flavour. When plucking season arrives, farmers have to keep an eye out on for their fields, an eye on their fields, to assess how growth is developing, monitoring leaf size and bud development. Buds can form and mature into leaves in a matter of days. Young leaves and buds have a greater concentration of aromatic compounds that is important for great tea, but their size yields a smaller harvest than it would if they were older and therefore larger and less aromatic. In all cases, the farmer's aim is to maximise both flavour flavor quality and yield from their field for the tea they are making. Teas such as First Flush Darjeeling require an early pluck before the leaf bud opens, but for, this, for, but for some a later pluck is needed. For oolongs, for example, more mature leaves are required for their fuller flavour profiles and added toughness in processing. The beautiful Chinese green tea, Taiping Hu, I can't pronounce that, Taiping Hao Kui, needs long leaves, often in excess of 7 centimetres. To use shorter leaves would not create the same appearance, so farmers have to wait for the leaves to reach maturity before plucking, around 20 days after the bud appears. Plucking can be delayed or brought forward due to yearly variations, with the farmers... That's five minutes, but I'll just finish this paragraph. Plucking can be delayed or brought forward due to yearly variations, with the farmers reacting accordingly. However, in some areas, there are auspicious dates that control picking, in China, the Qingming Festival, Tomb Sweeping Day, occurs in spring. During its duration, it is meant to rain. This means that the pre-Qingming tea is more desirable than that picked after the ceremony, because the rain speeds up growth and reduces the tenderness of the leaf. In recent years, pre-rain teas have often been classified pre-Qingming teas, even if the rain did not come during the festival. And if that was interesting and you want to explore more, Join us at Tea Book Club, grab a copy of this wonderful book um, and come along in to the five minute readings, catch up, see where you'd like to read. Come along to our end of the month uh, social chat and the end of next month, our book discussion. Thank you. See you soon.